So we're at Levi and Leah, and uh, behind us is our 2012 Toyota Prius that we've been living in for the last three months as we travel around North America. And today we're gonna give you a tour of what it looks like. We're Levi and Leah, a Canadian couple traveling out of the back of our Prius to complete a road trip of a lifetime. We left our apartment in the city to spend the next year circumnavigating North America. We have been on an insane number of adventures, all made possible by our little car. So today we're going to show you around our Prius camper and how we make that possible. Welcome to our 2012 Toyota Prius camper conversion tour. So we are in Baja, California right now, and we're just over three months into this trip, and we're feeling pretty dialed into the setup that we have. So now is a perfect time to show you around. Right now we have it set up in our kind of sleep stationary arrangement. So we'll start there and then we'll sort of backtrack to what it looks like when we're actually on the road and stealth camping. So this is a 2012 Toyota Prius. It has winter tires on it for a little bit of extra grip and a little bit more elevations because we are driving on pretty rough roads here in Mexico. And this tent on the back is the Napier Sports Cove. And this is what we sleep in when we are in designated campgrounds so that we can get a bit more ventilation. So we've got it down to a fine science. We can do this in less than five minutes. So really you just lift it over the top and these straps come around and strap onto the front of the car there to keep this nice and tight. And then it straps onto the wheel well and then around the bottom so that this is the whole awning that we can see out of when we're in the back of the car. On the back here, we have mosquito nets that allow for a bit of breeze and keep the bugs out. Normally, we don't need anything more than this. We also have WeatherTech rain guards for the edge of the windows because when we weren't in Mexico, we got a lot of rain and this allowed us to crack our windows slightly while we were sleeping inside, even if it was raining. Uh, we also got a lift kit from Prius Off-Road, which raises our car by an inch and a half. And honestly, for us traveling in the places that we've been traveling, it has been a huge game changer. The Prius does not have a lot of clearance normally, and when we're driving off-road, this thing would bump and grind quite a bit, especially because of this big box that we have mounted on the back of the car. Every day we say, I'm so thankful for the lift kit. <laughs> Literally every <laughs> single day. If you would like to know more about the Prius lift kit situation, we have an entire dedicated video to that adventure. So we'll leave that link down in the description below. Okay, so a lot of people have been like, oh, why do you have your cooler on the back of the car? That's so dumb. This isn't our cooler. This is our container that holds all of our camping equipment. So if it were to get stolen, it would suck, but it's all replaceable. Now, a lot of people have expressed concern that this is going to get broken into on the road trip. Now, we are only three months in, so we don't know exactly how long this will last. But so far, we haven't had any issues with this. Um, and really, all we have is a simple lock. So we bought this specific thing because you can put a lock on it and then ugh, open it up. And for extra security, we do have a cable that goes around it with another lock. So if we are somewhere that we're like, eh, it's a bit sketchy, we can put that on as another deterrent. So we have our small gas stove and of course a Frisbee. Because when you live on the road, you need fun things to do. Uh, and this is also our bin that we do all of our dishes in. It just holds all the dish accoutrement. My favorite of all these things is the spray bottle. We started this trip using like our growler or our water bottles to rinse things, and it's such a pain in the ass. This is so much easier, takes way less water. Uh, so yeah, a spray bottle that's like two bucks. Here we have our portable shower, which we have used more in Mexico than we mm. thought we would. Uh, some gas, a tarp down at the bottom, our hiking shoes. We have a hatchet in here as well. And now on the other side, this is our bin that has all of our cutlery and cooking stuff. I'm really happy with how small the setup is, but it has everything that we need. Uh, a cutting board. We have our bowls, plates. This is for tea, because we drink a lot of tea. Um, <laughs> and one of my favorite things that I knew I wanted to bring on the trip was just a little bit of pottery. You, I fought you so hard on that. I know, I know, like, but this was a gift for my friend Alexandra and like, I miss my home and my pottery. So I just needed a little something from home. Um, and I drink wine out of it, tea, whatever. Just when I'm, I'm, you know, I want a little taste of home. 
Meanwhile, I'm drinking like, you know, 50 cent Tecate beers <laughs> out of the oh, can. <laughs> I'm drinking those too, just in the pottery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Underneath that is our travel yoga mat, but that also adds cushion to our induction cooktop. Uh, the great thing about this induction cooktop is we can use this space back here to cook, and this just plugs into our extension cord that's on my side of the bed. We also use this blanket as a picnic blanket or just a way to like cover a nasty table or a picnic bench while we're camping in campgrounds and stuff like that. It is a very important part of our cooking yeah. setup. The fact that it's like a tarp on one side than a regular blanket on the other is fantastic. And actually all of the blankets with us on this trip, my sister bought for us. So thanks Jillian, they are so handy. <laughs> <laughs> now there is one feature of this whole hitch mounted system that I want to talk about because it is very cool, but it was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> so this box is mounted on a piece of wood which is attached to a frame from a company called Stowaway. And they specialize in hitch mounted cargo systems. When we were first thinking about the fact that we were going to be sleeping in our Prius, I was thinking that we would be getting in and out of the back all the time. And this box was going to be a huge hindrance in my mind. It turns out it isn't because this feature which we paid a lot of money to get Whoa. is not something we really ever use. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost always getting in and out of the car from the back seats, or if we are sitting back there, we just crawl around it. This is a really neat feature, um, but sadly, it, it just doesn't seem to be that useful on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is a cool party trick, so there's that. I will say that if you're planning on putting a cargo hitch on your Prius, installing a hitch will be necessary because they do not have hitches on them from the factory. You will also need a hitch rack system that has a rise in it. This cargo system, while being kind of nifty, also had the benefit of having a natural two inch rise, which was very, very important for making sure that this thing didn't drag on the ground everywhere that we went, which it still did until we got the lift. So get the lift if you're gonna get the box. <laughs> <laughs> you're starting to see how many days we have put into thinking about this. <laughs> and for those of you who are concerned that thieves are just gonna come and steal our whole hitch, we do have a locking hitch pin in here. So if somebody were to try and get in here, they'd have to smash that off first. And once again, we've had no real security issues with this thing so far. The few things that actually still fit in the action packer, but we have out for you to see, are our chairs. Uh, we got all of this second hand. Levi has the Helinox uh, Chair One XL, I think. Uh, and I have this cutie little Trekology one. Um, if you're taller than 5'5", five five, I would say get a bigger chair. It's perfect <laughs> for me, it's perfect size for me. This, this table, I would say, is also a little small for what we need it for, but... It's a little small, but this was a secondhand Big Agnes chair, and when you fold it all up, it's literally just like this big. I don't know how, it's this, it's this big. It's, it's, it's like this, it's like this. Also, these coffee cups, we use them every day for tea, for beer, cocktails, whatever it is. An insulated cup uh, is so handy, and we've been all over the yep. states and into Mexico so far, and people are willing to make your drinks and put them in here as well if you want them to go. Not only is it like waste free, so you're not just constantly buying plastic bottles and stuff, but it keeps your drink cold, which in very hot places is an incredible perk. But the main benefit of this box on the back of the car is to serve as a work surface. We boondock quite a bit. We are in places where there is no uh, designated campsite with a picnic table. And being able to cook and wash our dishes and eat our dinner off of this surface is an absolute game changer, especially for when you're camping in a car where you don't have like a living room in the rig. That's, my, that's the last of my rant about the box. We're gonna move on it's to over. the actual car now. But I will say there's a lot of people who have <laughs> things off the back but they don't have a flat surface the fact that this is a flat surface oh uh, yeah yeah no that is so a good handy. point no it's so true. handy maybe we should just end the the whole thing here it's only it's an action packer thanks tour. for watching our tour video guys <laughs> all we have is this box this box and this tent that's all it's all you need so this is what our little bedroom looks like it's actually so cozy 
I, I love it in here. Uh, this is definitely an added feature where we brought this pillow. Um, it's basically for aesthetics, and it's another thing that just reminds me of home. We don't actually sleep with it, it just looks nice. <laughs> for those of you wondering how a person who is six feet tall can sleep inside of a Toyota Prius, yes, I do fit. It is seven feet from the back of the car to the back of the passenger seat when it's pushed all the way to the front, so I do fit. I have a little bit of room, okay? But the thing is, he definitely cannot sleep on this side because the driver's seat does not go as far forward as a passenger. So it's a good thing that this is your side of the bed, this is my side of the bed. As someone who's 5'5", five five, very comfortable, plenty of space. <laughs> So this is what we call sleeping mode. This is when the car is ready for us to sleep in. We have our bed fully extended. We have our little Lucci lamp that hangs off of the clip here and illuminates us when we are reading our books in bed at night. In our upgrades video, I show the really cute Lucci twinkle lights that I have along the outside. Um, they're just charging right now in the sun, so they're, so they're not up, but don't worry, Levi will put in B-roll right here of what those look like. So on each side, we have these cute little cubbies. So when we're sleeping, our phones, our books, this is a really weird book. Um, <laughs> those sorts of things are living here. And on my side, the end of the extension cord goes along here so we can plug in the induction cooktop. Something that we use all the time is this little hammock. Uh, we originally thought we would be storing our books and things like that in here. No, it has basically become the drying rack. <laughs> uh, so if our bathing suits are a bit damp, we put them up here so while we're driving, they get some nice air on them. Right now, after doing the dishes, we just put our clean towel up there. Um, my face cloth usually lives up here. And then, because we're in our 30s, our mouth guards. <laughs> so the mouth guard cases live up there. That's how you know we're being real. We're showing you our mouth guard cases right now. We, we yeah. should have just lied about that. As you can see, I also have a little pocket knife right here. This is uh, maybe a little bit of security, not really. It's mostly because uh, when we need a quick knife from the front seat, if we're cutting up an apple or something, I can just quickly grab it from here. Let's be honest, I've been using it almost exclusively to cut up limes and put it into our beer. So. <laughs> Oh, that's God. the lime knife. <laughs> also, this little back of seat storage is super handy. In here, we have toilet paper, which when you're in Mexico, bring them with you everywhere. Um, and we have our little fan. It just plugs into our battery bank, so typically we'll have it set up and we'll use the clip here to hold it on, and we can plug it into the battery bank, which is under my feet when we're sleeping. During the day, hangs out in here. We have some charging cables for that and for our phones. Uh, and this is my little hair section. All of my <laughs> scrunchies and my little clip. Um, they all live there. Now if you just looked at that whole bed set up and you sort of wondered where all of our stuff is, it's in the front seat. So in the front seat we have both of our backpacks. We have a variety of things in our glove boxes, like our toothbrushing equipment and stuff like that. We also have our water bottles in the front seat, as well as our towels. And this basket, which is full of basically all of our dry foods and vegetables that we don't keep in the fridge. Yeah, Levi fought me hard. I'm like, we're not gonna bring the gun basket. Where is it gonna go, blah, blah, blah. It's so handy. I, I will concede that the basket has been very useful, okay. Yes. As you can see in the front, we have our, I guess you call it a windshield a wind Reflector. Cover? Reflector. It doesn't work super well. I wouldn't recommend buying this one, but you need one of these if you live out of your car. Yeah. We also have these little reflector screens that go on all of our windows. So they're black on one side, reflective on the other. Uh, typically when we're camping like this, we just have the front two up, again, for privacy, because then we have the mosquito nets on the back. In the side pockets on both sides, we have some hand sanitizer because there's not always a convenient place to wash your hands. And we do have some bear spray here. It's kind of as personal self-defense in the event that somebody tries to mess with us when we're in our car, but it's also bear spray for bears when we go on hikes, because <laughs> we do that quite a bit too. These are our solar panels, and uh, they 
are probably the biggest thing that we brought on this trip <laughs> and the most cumbersome thing to move around. But when it's not in the front seat of our car, it's in the back seat for driving mode, which we're going to go into right now. So we're in Canada, West Coast. So we're from Vancouver. Oh, yeah. we're Vancouver Island. Yeah, we're oh, in Victoria. Okay. Oh wow, I should have noticed your license plate. I know, plate. I was just looking at your license plate. I'm I like, should have caught on too. Yeah. Like. All right, so up until two days ago, we were sleeping on this Shiki Bhutan cotton mattress, which was not comfortable enough, sadly. So we have purchased these two very ugly yoga mats from a Walmart here in Mexico to kind of soften things up a little bit. It's actually amazing what a difference it has made. <sighs> uh, we haven't quite figured out rolling up the bed yet. The nice thing about when it was just the futon, it was so easy to like put it into thirds and wrap it up. And now that we have these, we're still figuring that out. <laughs> so underneath here, we have an incredible amount of storage. We have a bin with all of our kind of cooking sauces and oils and whatnot. We have all of our pots and pans that fit together in this neat little package. This is a product from Stanley, and honestly, it feels like regular cookware. It is very heavy, thick bottom pots and pans that have honestly served us really well on the trip. and. They fit right under here like so. And we needed to buy steel because we have an induction cooktop, so we couldn't just use the pans that we already had, but making an investment, this was fantastic. And then in the corner here, we just have some miscellaneous pantry items for food that we might make down the road. We also do have a bag for this tent, which also fits underneath here when we are traveling. We'll show you that in a moment. This is what our back seat area looks like when we are in driving mode. Our backpacks have moved to the front, the basket is here, and you can now see our battery bank, our water, and our fridge. So our solar panels and the battery bank are all from EcoFlow. Uh, this typically lives right there, but I took it out so you can more easily see the battery bank. This is on my side. This is where my feet go when we're sleeping. Full transparency. Our battery bank and solar panels were gifted to us from EcoFlow. So obviously we are not unbiased here, but I will say that we have had an excellent experience using these things ruthlessly <laughs> for the last three months. This is the EcoFlow Delta Max, which is a absolutely massive beast of a battery bank, but it can power our fridge and our phones for almost three days. Also, it matches your outfit and the car and the tent. <laughs> <laughs> so we rarely pull this thing out of the car because it is so heavy. If we do that, it's usually to plug it into an outlet somewhere in order to get a quick charge while we're staying someplace. Otherwise, we try to use the car to charge it or our solar panels, which we have done a lot on this road trip. Some huge benefits of the EcoFlow is all these ports. We can directly charge our phones via USB type C right here. We can do regular USB here for our fans and whatnot. And then on the back side, you have regular plugs for a whole bunch of stuff and this bottom one here charges our fridge. If you wanna know all the stats, I'm gonna put them on the screen right now if that's important to you. For us, we just knew that we needed the biggest thing that would fit the best in this particular spot in the car with a flat surface. Because this is the foot of the bed where Leah's feet lie. If you wanna check them out, we are going to be leaving a link down in the description, so, you know. Check them out. A lot of people are asking about the storage that we have in here. And the best thing that we did was to take out the back seats and to build this deck. Not only is where we sleep, but where we store all of our clothes. This is my side. It's very organized. I love that. Um, <laughs> I, I have five packing cubes that are designated based on like jackets, dresses. These are all of my shorts, pants, shirts underwear and bras, uh, and then just more extraneous stuff that can live in the middle. So I have my hoodie, I have our bathing suits in this bag here, and then if it gets really cold, which it hopefully won't for the next little while, mm. uh, we, we have our toques and we also have uh, warmer winter jackets. Also underneath here, I have some of my teaching equipment. 
So I will be teaching a course on the road uh, and I had to bring along my sex ed kit. So this is all the stuff I use to teach about contraception. Yes, this is a vulva puppet. This is a Woody. This is purely for condom demonstrations. Uh, but if you're a sex educator and you live in your car, this is the smallest sex ed kit that I could put together. I like how you put the fact that you're a sex educator at the very end of that. So oh, yeah. you just have all of the sex paraphernalia. You're, like, you're like, who is this lady? What does she do? This is my job. It's, uh, it's not just like a fetish. But if that's your thing, that's also okay. No, <laughs> If you watched our build series, we did all of this with Levi's dad. Uh, and an important project that I took on were these side pockets. These essentially act as a nightstand and they hold all of the miscellaneous stuff you don't want to get lost in the car. We have risers under the battery bank and under our fridge that helps with airflow, but also shoe storage underneath. We also have our insulated growler. Uh, we actually haven't put any beer in it on this trip. <laughs> We've only used it for water. We have a 20 liter water, it's 20 liters, right? Yeah. Okay. We have a 20 liter uh, water jug in the middle here, but that's quite heavy to be pulling in and out mm -hmm. all the time. So having this to be able to refill our water bottles throughout the day is so handy. So on our side, we have two hats that are hung up here just in case we want to go for a hike and it's sunny out. And back here, we keep um, our window screens when they're not on the windows, as well as our window covers so they're easy to find. These, of course, match the side of the car that they're supposed to go on. <laughs> In here, we have another sort of privacy feature for the back window. Um, that's for when we're stealth camping, which we have a whole video about that if you're interested to know how you sleep in a random neighborhood in Portland. <laughs> this is our 20 liter water jug, which somehow magically fits in between <laughs> our fridge and our battery bank. It could not be a millimeter bigger. <laughs> and uh, here in Mexico, it has been a pretty big deal to have that much water available at all times. This very functional fridge is from Iceco. Uh, this is the Go 20 refrigerator that they sell for like small campers, I guess. Um, and it has worked perfectly for us. This thing holds basically two plus days worth of food and drinks. For such a tiny fridge, we have been able to fit a surprising amount of food in here and it is extremely efficient. Because of how efficient it is, our battery bank could run this thing with nothing else for like three plus days at a time, including all night. So here on the side, it has a touch display. You can adjust the temperature of how cold you want it to be. And this thing will change and reach temperature very, very quickly. As you can see, there's two dials on here and that's because you can change this to actually be a fridge freezer and then you can independently set the temperatures of both sides. We haven't done that yet actually, but so far this thing has worked extremely... <laughs> My glasses just broke. And this is a tip that you should never buy cheap sunglasses. We have beat the living shit out of this fridge. As you can see, there's scratches all over the yeah. top. We have run it nonstop, pulling it out and putting it back in for three months and it is still gone very strong. Iceco did send us this fridge as well, so um, obviously we are biased, uh, but this has been such a amazing product for our trip. We can't thank them enough for sending it along, so we're gonna leave them down in the description as well if you wanna go check them out. Now, in classic car camping fashion, we've utilized every space. So this is behind our passenger seat where we have our hammock, a sunshade rain shelter thing here, and a spare down blanket, which we use quite a bit when it gets cold. That right there is also the separator for the fridge if you wanna make it into a little freezer. And behind the driver's side here, this is where our extension cord is. So, so handy. Uh, this is a first aid kit. So if we were stuck somewhere and in dire straits, that's what that is. And this is also a miscellaneous pack bag for if we wanted to have a fire, there's band-aids, bug spray, things like that. They didn't really know where they should go. I'll go in there. And another really important bag, this has all of our charging cables. So when we are in an Airbnb or something like that, we take out the battery bank, we take out the fridge. This is all of the cables so we can charge them up when we're inside. 
All right, so now you have seen what the car looks like in its various forms of camping setup. So now we're gonna get it ready for driving. And, uh, and this is what it looks like locked up, which, uh, come on, I think that looks pretty good, right? You're a little biased, but yeah, it's a sex car. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And now then, we're in driving mode. Driving time. One of my favorite things, too, is that our Lucci uh, solar lights, these just sit on the dash while we're driving, so they charge while we're driving, and when we get to our next spot, they're ready to go. So you know me, I'm, I'm all about that ambiance. Thank you for watching our tour video. Hopefully this has inspired you to get out on the road. Something we've started saying lately in our shorts is that we started this trip to prove that you don't need a sprinter van to travel the world. And hopefully uh, we have proven that you can do it if you have the means and the inspiration to do so. It's been super fun. I would say relatively affordable to put together these kit, especially if you're looking at like sprinter vans or other things like that. And we love it. It's really comfortable. And our neighbors literally came over. We're like, are you sleeping in that Prius? <laughs> People are super intrigued and, and we love the lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow our adventure for the next seven months, make sure you're subscribed. And we'll see you in the next one. So you might think that us living in our Toyota Prius is a little eccentric, and maybe it is. But how weird would it be if we lived in our Toyota Prius and so did my parents? Good morning, Mom. Ha 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 ha!